Hi, I am Amir. In video production, when we start to simultaneously shoot with multiple cameras, this process is called multiple camera production, or in short, multicam, or MCP. Today, we will be sharing some tips and techniques that can be applied to a variety of multicam styles to ensure that your next shoot is a success. In this segment, we will be exploring the process to prepare for multiple camera production. So, you just got a project to shoot a talk show. You're hyped to get the ball rolling, but wait. The first step in any video production is the pre-production. You need a plan first before barging in with your guns blazing. I mean, cameras recording. The first thing you need to do is go check out the location of the shoot. A recce to the location will give you ideas on how to set up your multicam gears. Check for the plot points, audio, a lighting condition, and the space you're going to have to place your cameras against the subjects. Talk to your client about the mood he or she afters and you are good to plan out the camera and lighting positions. Alright, you have recce the location, extracted all the details from the client and you're ready to put your gear list together. Using the right gear is the core of a good shoot and a great final product. Choosing gear for multicam production is largely dependent on the particulars of the event itself as well as the location. Now, let's start with the cameras. There are five main things you'll need to consider before selecting a camera. The maximum record time, focal length of your lenses, low light capabilities, audio capabilities, and media types. Even the most recent DSLR cameras can only record to up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds. So if you're planning to roll longer than that, without a break that is, you'll need to stick with a traditional camcorder. Whatever you choose, you'll need to make sure that the lens on your camera has an appropriate focal length to capture the shots you need. Knowing your camera placement, where the action is taking place, and what type of shots you need from the particular camera will help you decide. If your event will have dim lighting, as many weddings and performances do, the camera and lens you choose need to be well suited for low light shooting. Ideally, the bigger the sensor and the smaller the f-stop, the more likely you'll get great low light footage without having to boost the gain or ISO which can result in noisy footage. Keep in mind that shooting at a smaller f-stop will also give you shallower depth of field, which can make it tough to keep the action in focus if your subjects are moving unpredictably. Another factor to consider is the camera's audio capabilities. DSLR cameras aren't known for pristine audio inputs, while camcorders with XLR inputs can certainly get the job done, with easy access to critical audio controls. Finally, you should consider what type of memory the cameras take and make sure that you've got enough cuts with enough memory to record the entire event. And now you need to decide what type of support you'll use. This will largely depend on what type of shots you need for your event. Typically, one camera will be your master shot and remain fairly static. If your other camera shot will have movement, you'll want to make sure your tripod has a fluid head. If you have a roaming handheld camera, you may want to consider using some type of stabilizing rig to ensure smooth shots. Now you've got the video site covered with proper cameras and support, and it's time to tackle the audio gear. You'll need to consider three things. How many microphones will you need? What types of microphones will you use? And how will you record the audio? Wireless mics are ideal because your cameras or audio recorder are likely to be considerable distance from where your mic is placed. You'll need to make sure you can get all those signals recorded. If you have a sufficient number of audio inputs on your cameras or switcher, you can record directly. Otherwise, you may need to get a portable audio recorder with enough inputs to handle all your mics. Another way to record audio signals is using a single boom mic and pointing it towards the host and guests, which is perfect to capture audio for a talk show. And you can connect the boom mic audio directly to your master camera or to your portable audio recorder. Now we've come to the lights. If you're planning to supplement the existing lights, you'll need to acquire the proper lights and stands. This could be anything from large kino lights, tungsten lights, or LED lights. You should also try to use lighting that matches the color temperature of the existing light to avoid white balance issues. Alright, you already know about the pre-production and the necessary gears for the multiple camera production, but there's still a few decisions left to make before you can start shooting. Yeah. In our next segment, we talk about choosing a multicam workflow and setting up your gear at the event. From filming shots to matching cameras is the final hurdle before you hit record and capture the magic.